feeling retro. thing done I don't think I've got bought the right thing <laughs> doesn't look like it does it I thought that was going in there yeah that's not a mini disc what is that that I bought then? okay I bought the wrong thing then can't test it can't believe it got it <sighs> I am well confused I'm sure that's the right thing Can it look? That's pathetic. Hey, retro lovers, welcome to the channel. This intro just goes to show that me and Tom are enthusiastic about retro electronics, but we don't always know what we're doing. And this video is number four, are looking at the Sony CMT SD1. So if you've not seen the other three previously, there'll be a link in the description. And our New Year's resolution is to get to 10,000 subscribers. So if you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and help us reach our goal. Back to the video where six days later, Tom bought the right thing. So let's take a look at the mini disc deck, the MDS SD1. Now, if you've got keen eyes, you might notice that we've got two different speakers here today. That's because we have taken a little break. Um, I am a keen retro fan. However, I do still make mistakes. So, when I went out to buy a mini disc, I, oops, I searched on eBay, mini disc, and got delivered what looked like a nice little mini disc. Except that it's not a mini disc, it's like a micro CD. You can see it there. Compact disc still, so it is actually just a tiny CD. So we have taken a little break here at Feeling Retro and I have come back with some proper recordable mini discs. Quite hard to get hold of actually. So on the front panel here we have another separate power button so we can switch that separate off on its own. We have the eject button which at the moment doesn't do anything, it says no disc. And we have that glass panel which is that cool feature that is on every one of these separates. We have the option to change the display. We have the record and the CD sync record button here, which we're gonna have a go at using today with one of our recordable mini discs. We have the play, pause, stop, rewind and fast forward. We have a few extra buttons here and we have another plus and minus there with that lovely click. So let's get into it. We have nothing to play yet on our mini discs. So we will take a look at copying a CD onto the mini disc. So first of all, let's get the case off our brand new writable mini disc. Possibly easier said than done. Just checking that I'm not missing any uh, open like that. And now we have, if you're not familiar with mini discs, what looks quite similar to a micro CD but actually it stays in its little compartment and looks a little bit more like perhaps a floppy disk. And this looks like it's going to be perfectly into our auto loading mechanism, which Sony says should bite onto our mini disk and pull it in nicely for us. Gentle push with the thumb. And now, as I expected, it tells us that this is a blank disk, but not for long. So now we have our blank mini disc in, we also need a CD. At this point you've got to make sure it's a CD that has the music on that you're wanting to record across, your favourite album, a soundtrack, or maybe a CD that you remember making your own compilation. So at this point you want to focus on the component that's going to play the sound that you want to record. So in this case it's the CD player. That could however be a turntable, it could be a tape, it could be the radio. As I said, we are focusing on converting a CD across. So on my amplifier here, I need to change the function over to CD. At the beginning, I told you that this was one of Sony's best. That's not only because of the sound quality, but also because of the simplicity and the simple steps that you have to take to do things. 
that could be otherwise quite difficult and tricky to do on other systems. This system has the CD sync button here, which should make this process really nice and simple. So back on the mini display now, I'm going to play this, press the CD sync button there. And you can see now that the record button has come on, the record light has come on and the sync light has also come on. It's also flashing up with us now saying C71 and check opt in. So a moment ago, you saw that we were getting a little error message on our mini disc player whilst trying to convert the CD. Now here at Feeling Retro, we do like to show reasons why things don't always go to plan. The reason that didn't go to plan here was because we needed to connect up the two devices using a digital optical cable. We needed to use this cable to connect the source, which in this case is the CD player, up to the recording component, which is the mini disc player. So I need to get these two ends plugged in to here where it's a CD in and down on our CD player in CD out. Now, fingers crossed for me when we turn it around, let's see if it works. So again, let's start from the beginning. That was a fairly simple process. I do just want to reiterate here at Feeling Retro, we are not experts, we are enthusiasts. So I think it's important that we show you how it goes in real life. Things don't go perfectly. You do have to start again. You do have to find extra cables. That's exactly what we've just had to do here. Probably like you might have to do at home when you're trying to replicate this with your own system, whether it be similar or quite different. So we go back, we get the amplifier, or our source onto the correct setting, which in this case is CD. And over to our recording device, we have our blank tape in and we now need to press CD sync. The record light should flash. It's saying that we're going to sync the two. It's showing us the full duration of the CD, which is 74 minutes. And it's saying that we have a new track. All we have to do now on the recording device is press the play button and the recording starts. So now at this point, the recording will continue. When it's completed, the CD player will stop and the mini disc player will stop automatically too. So at any point throughout this process, I can skip tracks, I can skip ahead, I can do that using the CD player. If I wanted to stop the recording or pause the recording, I could. And we can also clear the functions here using the clear button at the top. So whilst we're recording, let's have a look at some of the different options. We've got the display button here on the bottom left. If we change that, we see either the time remaining on the full CD, we see the name that's been given to the CD, or we see the time elapsed on each track. If we click through the menu, it allows us to go into an edit menu and it allows us to enter in a name. New name in, yes. We can now give it a name by flicking through and using this lovely clicking dial here and flicking through the alphabet, if we go through. Let's go into super speed time, whilst I give it a name. Super speed mode enabled. So I've just navigated through the menus and now we can change the recording level as well. And you can do that to adjust the recording level when the recorded sound is either too soft or too strong on the recording that you're making. You can adjust and save that recording level for each recording sound or function. So for today, we're just gonna change that for when we're recording from the CD. You can see now that we've got into the recording level that we've got two dials here. You can see that they're changing and flicking as the sound changes that we're recording. If we use the dial here, we can change and give it a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and that will go all the way up to 12. I'm guessing that would be the same all the way down in negative. This will be an awful sound of recording now, I would have thought. And you can see that these have gone much lower down. They're not coming anywhere near as high. If we go all the way up to plus 12, which we're getting a warning flash, you can see they're both at maximum level here. I'm gonna take that back down to zero. I'd like this to be quite a nice recording. To enter, press enter, sorted. You can see we've got the level sync lighting up. That means here that it's already recognizing when tracks end. As you saw earlier on, we flicked between the CD player down below and the mini disc player. When the CD player was four seconds into track two, 
the mini disc player was also four seconds into track two. That's great, it recognises when tracks start and finish, which means later on we should be able to skip through those tracks nice and easily without having to fast forward and rewind like you would have had to do with an analogue tape. Uh, so I've just discovered that we've actually just named track three Feeling Retro. Track two is called F and track one has no name. You could go through and change all of those tracks as well. You can also give the mini disc a name too. If we wanted to clear any of that information, we've always got the clear button there. That's nice and simple to use. Well, I hope you've enjoyed us showing you some of the features today that the CMT SD1 has to offer. We've had a look at doing all sorts of things. There are lots of functions that this CD player and system can do as well that we haven't had time to do in this video. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've found that it records and plays to a high standard. I've found that using those tricky functions on this system is actually very simple with only a couple of steps to follow for great results. I love some of the bonuses, like being able to change the recording level so easily when you're recording onto a tape or a mini disc. I love being able to change the name of those things. I love that it's so compact and it looks brilliant, but yeah, it still packs a punch. I can definitely see why people out there call this Sony's best. And I would love to know if you agree or disagree with that statement. Let us know in the comments section below. But if you don't agree with that statement, please, please, please do let us know. What do you think is better? Now, don't go wild. I'd like to know something that is fairly comparable with this system, but go for it. Let us know at Feeling Retro. We love finding out and discovering new equipment that we can review, enjoy and admire with you. That's us for today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're already subscribed, then please like and check out our other videos and keep coming back for new content as well. If you weren't already, I hope you are now Feeling Retro.